Media, YouTube family. What's going on? If this is your first visit to my channel, my name's Karen Campbell and I do live for teaching mixed media here on YouTube. And today I wanna show you my favorite way for making little travel custom watercolor palettes. It's really easy. These are great little, this is a great little cheat for making your own favorite combination of watercolors, but this also makes a really great gift. I did not come up with this idea, but I've used it many times throughout the years using all different upcycled and recycled and brand new containers. And today I'm just gonna show you my step-by-step -step process for making these little watercolor uh, to-go tins. Are you ready? All right, let's go. All right, first thing you're gonna need are some tins, okay? Look at this little baby one. Oh my God, I can't even take it. So you can use any upcycled tin this was bob ross mints as you know i love bob ross uh this was a this is actually like a holds gift cards come christmas time and then you can also get these in this is like i got this at tuesday morning for 99 cents and they come in all different sizes this was actually um i bought a set of stamps and this was this this was what the stamps came in so any kind size of little metal tins is uh, step one. Okay, now we're gonna need some, these are called half pans. They are not surprisingly half the size of full size pans. And you can buy these for really cheap on Amazon. I will put links in the description box for you. But yeah, you can buy a mess of these. You can buy like a hundred for pretty cheap. Um, So that's step two. Step three is deciding how you want to affix your half pans into the tin of your choice. You have two choices. You can have them on a magnetized background, backing, excuse me, so that you can pop these in and out, uh, change out your, your little half pan collection as you like, or you can hot glue them inside so that they don't move. So in this one, I used magnets. You can buy magnets on rolls like this Simply take a piece of scissors, snip it off. This is adhesive background. Just stick it onto the backing of your little half pans. And then these come in and out super quickly, just like that. So smart, so easy. Or you can take a glue gun and you can make this a permanent fixture. If you know that, oh, these are, these are also magnetized. But um, what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna actually glue them because I don't want to, I don't wanna actually take them out. I wanna keep them as is. Okay, so once you decide on your method of adherence, <laughs> whether permanent or temporary, um, just get your supplies as needed. Again, supplies are in the description box for you. Okay, the next step is to go pick what color, what watercolors you like. So I am down here and I'm kind of looking at, uh, these are some, my Daniel Smith collection. And if you're wondering how to start a Daniel S Smith collection, I might have a whole nother video on that. You can check the, the eye in the corner of your screen right there and you can watch um, watch how I kind of go about doing that. Um, but I'm gonna pick out my colors from my larger selections. And then once I have that, um, pick out your colors. And then we're gonna go and um, squirt them into the half pans. Now, just a little quick tip. I highly recommend before you start gluing and squirting, you got to make sure that you know how many of the half pans are gonna fit inside your tin. And also the orientation, because you don't wanna get started and then all of a sudden be like, oh my God, I, yeah, they're not gonna fiddle like that. Um, so make sure you do all this rearranging before you start your gluing. I'm swatching my Daniel Smith watercolors and check this out on this empty palette. I didn't realize that this this plastic insert comes out, so I just cut uh, watercolor paper to the same shape and I swatched and labeled them. And look at this, it's right in my palette for me. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm not gonna lie, picking out colors that you are going to put in your tin is super stressful. Because all I can think about when I'm picking out my 12 colors is all the colors that are gonna be left over that can't go in my tin and it makes me super sad. So this is a process that sometimes take a minute, so take your time. Um, I'm gonna be using this for some urban sketching that I'm teaching my drawing club students. So I know I'm gonna be outside 
doing um, buildings, like exterior buildings, landscapes, things around town and in my neighborhood. So I'm trying to think more along those lines. We'll see what ones end up making that cut. And then to help myself with the decision process, what I do is actually get out all my paints and then I'm gonna swatch out the 12 colors on a little separate sheet. Cause what I'm gonna do is it's gonna live right in here so I can know it's really, really important to have a color swatch so you know what they look like. Um, otherwise, when you're looking at this, you can't immediately tell which colors are which. So I'm gonna actually swatch them out first and then kind of look at that swatch card and consider, okay, I'm out and about, I'm doing my urban sketching. Are those colors that are gonna be the ones that I'm happiest with? And if so, I'm good. And if not, then it's not too late to change my mind on which ones I'm gonna include. All right, once you have your colors picked out, you just scored them in the little tubes. Well, and by tubes, I mean half bands. I do fill them all the way up, as you can see. But you can kind of give them a little tap tap to get them to settle down. I glue them after I squirt them because you really need two hands in order to fill up the little pans. Definitely not rocket science. Okay, so I finally made my decisions. It was really, really difficult. So I scored them all, all out into their little half pans and then I'm gonna let them dry overnight. And then in the morning I'm going to, I actually decided because I was having such a hard time, I actually am gonna do the magnets at the bottom so I can change my mind. That is the upside of doing the non-permanent uh, version. So you can see I was swatching um, yeah, so I'm gonna in the morning. I'm gonna put the magnet strips on and then get them all ready for my little baby Look at it. You have 12 colors and this teeny will just sit in the palm of my hand So awesome. So I waited till everything was dry overnight and then I rearranged them into the order I want to have them in Next stop is making the swatch for the top. I can't work unless I know what colors I am using so I'm just gonna take my pencil and um, trace this shape and cut it out. So I cut out the shape and I'm getting ready to lay out the paint in my tin. Now I'm gonna make my swatch card. I'm gonna use this template to make one, two, three, four rows of ovals and that's where I'm gonna do my swatching. And as you can see, you can just use the template in order to roughly make the number of paints that you're gonna have and then I'm gonna go and actually label them and swatch in the order. So this one is green gold, sap green, et cetera, et cetera. On the swatch card they go. It definitely takes some tiny writing to get them all in, but this way when I run out of a color, I know exactly which one to put in. So this is actually really important because for example, also like this one, I swatched a long time ago and I lost the swatch and now I have no idea what colors these are, so that's, stupid so make sure you go ahead and go through that process trust me you will thank yourself later on now i'm going to use my glue gun i decided against the magnets because these particular ones have um this writing at the bottom so the magnet was having a hard time sticking so i'm going to go ahead and actually use my glue gun and i'm just going to test one to make sure it's going to work i'll use this on this one just want to make sure this is going to adhere to the metal. Always test your stuff so you're not disappointed. Give that a few seconds to dry. Just make sure it's not going to like pop off. I know with metal, metal is funky and sometimes I think if the two surfaces are metal, they won't stick. But as one of them is plastic, yeah, that's really strong on there. Then you're good to go. So my test is awesome. And then I'm going to go ahead and one by one glue all of these into my Bob Ross tin. Here we go. All right, so all my little half pans are nestled in there and now I'm making the swatch chart. So I'm just gonna go one by one and add a little, just add a little hint of the color because it's just nice to have a reminder of what you're gonna get and it's really helpful when you're out in nature um, 
you know, you're trying to decide what colors to do what, and you can at a glance, you can start kind of visualizing uh, what you want your piece to look like based on the colors that are in your little travel set. And the nice part about this also is that you can just totally customize your colors. And this is a great thing if you're sharing, like Daniel Smith watercolors are really expensive. So it'd be a wonderful gift to, um, you could say buy some like 15 ML tubes and maybe make a little travel set for a friend of yours who likes art and you kind of want them to get in on the fun too. So there's lots of really cool things that you can do with these. So if you have a crafty person in your life, you can, this would just make a really cool gift. All right, next, I'm gonna coat this with a, just an acrylic spray sealer. That way, if this car gets wet while I'm watercoloring, I can actually just take a nice, clean something and, um, and wipe it off. So as you can see, it doesn't activate the watercolors because it's an acrylic spray. So it just sprays on and it sits on top and it creates a nice clear coating again. So in case I get any watercolors on here, I can just kind of wipe it off with a cloth and it fixes those in place so that when I do have to wipe it, then they won't run because that this locks it in, in place. And the very last step is um, I'm going to use the spray adhesive to take my little swatch card and affix it to the back there so it's not flopping all around definitely um you want to i always all anything spray i do outside as you can see so just to be safe and not get anything contaminated anywhere this spray adhesive i'm obsessed with it's so fun <laughs> and it works so well so you just spray and press this like this. And my friends, you've got yourself a brand new, totally customized, amazing gift for yourself or an artsy crafty loved one. And there you go. Oop. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Let's go make some art.